So I'm guessing that oh, you want this type of effect, the font to come to appear as if you are writing it. So this is what I was able to achieve using the dynamic paint and mask modifier. I'll show you how it is done. Let me just remove it. I'll just hide this one. So I've added a text. I can change this and uh, let's change for the sake of tutorial. Make it a P. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll show you how it is done first. So we have this cube over here. Now what I'll just hide this also. I'll add a new cube over here. I'll just resize it, top view, and uh, why don't I see the screencast keys? Let me switch on the screencast keys. Come on. Okay, so my screencast keys, cast keys are not working. Anyways, so this is the cube. What we are going to do is, we are going to use this cube to animate the appearance of this text. So how are we going to do this is, first you are going to convert the text into a mesh. So right click on this uh, text, convert to mesh. So now it is converted into this mesh. What is this? <coughs> so what we are going to do now is, just go to this physics tab, physics properties, click, and then here go to dynamic paint. Okay, so this is the canvas on which we are going to paint. So canvas, now select vertex, and we have a length of 180 frames, so we are going to keep it that. Now in this surface type, we are going to go and select weight. And now we are going to select brush. I, I already have a brush select, uh, collection, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to select this cube, press M, M for monkey, M, and I'm going to create a new collection, brush new, okay? So, now again, I'm going to select this text, I'll go back to this, physics property, dynamic paint, canvas, and in brush collection, I'm going to select brush new, okay? So, Currently it is not doing anything. Why? Because we have to select this cube and click dynamic paint here also in the physics property. And in this we are going to change, we are going to use it as a brush. So select brush and click add brush. And in this mesh volume, everything is fine. Now again, go back to select P and in this you're going to see is, one last thing I forgot to mention is output. In this vertex output, output, what you're going to do is just click on this plus icon. So it is going to create a new vertex group. Uh, if you come into this object data properties tab, and here you'll see a DP weight vertex group is created. Okay. So now again, if I go here, it is still not going to change anything. First of all, let's change the appearance of this cube. We don't want this big uh, obstructing R. View. So I've changed, uh, I've gone to the object properties in the viewport, dis uh, viewport display, I've changed it to wire. In this, we're going to select mask modifier and we're going to select the water group DP weight. Okay. So currently it is not doing anything. Let's see why that is. So I figured out the issue. Uh, I didn't have to do anything. There was no issue with our settings. We just had to play, uh, hit play button once and it will, it started working. So now what you can see is, wherever I move this cube, the object disappears, but we want opposite of that. So what we are going to do is, just go here and click on this. Okay. Now, this happens. Okay, so now you want it, you want the effect to be permanent. So, if I pass my, uh, if I pass this cube through a, a area, an area of this alphabet, it should stay visible. So, what you can do is just, oh, undo. Okay, so just play 
uh, hit spacebar or play button and then move and it will stay visible <laughs> again i'm going to hit spacebar and then play button and it is going to stay visible now what you want is uh that it should be it should follow the path okay so let me go to that uh, text and uh, mask modifier off now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a curve over here so mesh not mesh curve bezier curve so scale it down and this delete this okay one and just at the start of this okay now you just have to do what you're going to do is just extrude okay so the first vertex is totally in the opposite direction just rotate it and so you might have to go into the wireframe mode to see the position of the vertex again scale it down rotate grab again scale it down okay so extrude rotate so this is all done so if you want to view this just move the curve grab press g and z v then move it up now when you do this uh, extrude it so you you'll be able to do this so we have this here we have the path here so again i'm going to bring the curve to the zero position along z axis and what i'm going to do is i'm going to place this cube over here over the thickest portion of the letter so i'm going to scale it down and make sure that it is covering all of it okay so this is fine now <coughs> so now what you're going to do is you you're going to select this cube this cube go to the constraint or object constraint properties tab click here and select follow path and select this curve that we just created okay then select the curve why did it not select the curve Okay, so it selected the curve. Now another thing, what you're going to do is just click follow curve. Okay, just follow curve. Currently, it is doing nothing. When we play, uh, press play. Now just check this offset. You can see it is following the path, but there is some issue. Okay. Let's go back to zero. Now, what we are going to do is we 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 are going to make sure that the cube is in the absolute zero position. So press Alt G, press Alt R to clear the location and rotation properties. Now, when you see, oh, not this, it won't play anything. Now, just reduce this. It is going to follow the path exactly as you. Raised it to be okay. So, what you're going to do now is just keyframe it at a zero position first, and then go to the last frame and type minus hundred, okay, and then keyframe it. So now, when you see, it is going to move along the curve. But the issue here is it starts slowly and then gains some speed. we don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to select both the uh, both the keyframes 
press v and b v for vector b and then select vector so now it will be in one single linear mo motion so this is that now we again select this uh, letter go to the modify tab and switch on the mask now when you play the animation what you're going to see is this Now you can see there is the animation is not that smooth. Uh, that is because let me show you once. And that is because the geometry is not smooth. What you're going to do is to solve that, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier and place it at the top. And if your PC allows it. Keep it at three. Okay. Now when we switch on the mask and play the animation, it will be much better as compared to the earlier choppy version. Let me go back and then let's play it. So another thing that uh, you uh, you must have seen is because of the size of the cube, this portion of this portion is also visible. It is being painted to visibility. So what you can do is you can keyframe the size of the cube. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the text, disable the mask modifier, and then I'm going to keyframe the size scale of the cube. So press I and select scale. Okay, play, 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 and here I'm going to press I scale again. Now, let it come to this position. So we want it to be a, of a smaller size. So just press S and scale it down to this size and press I and scale. Then we move ahead. Again, we see it is overlapping. So again, scale it down, I and scale, okay? So now when it goes down at this point, what you're going to do is, actually you don't have to do anything, just let it play. Let it play. If it is covering all of the area of the text, let it be. Now, at this point, we need to increase the size. So here, keyframe it. And then as this reaches this part, I'm going to scale it up like this, IS. OK. So now again, this part, we are going to scale it down. I Yes. Scale it up. I S. Make sure at every step it is covering all of the letter. I S. Okay, so it is covering all of the letter. So at this point, we need it a bit smaller. So make it a bit smaller. That's it. OK. Rotate. At this point, it is fine. But just at, as it reaches this point, scale it up. IS. Again, scale. And at this point, we need it. Actually, you don't need to do anything now. It is going to cover it all, all of it. So let's see. Okay, so we have the animation done of the scale. You can see it goes down uh, on the scale, then goes down and then done. So now what we're going to do is select the letter again and enable the mask modifier. Then we're going to play it. Okay. 
so most of it is working fine just there is one issue over here it is a little bit smaller so what we are going to do is scale it up a bit high s so okay again scale it up high s and it is working fine <laughs> so this is how you achieve this animation effect of handwriting animation effect now if you want a perfect result you're going to need to do is model the letter in a quads quartz geometry is going to give you the best result here the geometry is all triangles so the result will not be too good so another thing what i what we can do is uh, just switch off all the modifiers uh, we are going to try for the remesh modifier let's see if it works on this or not now, this is a tricky thing i don't know how it is going to work not box shoes. Okay, so remesh modifier is giving us a pretty good result, uh, but it is a little choppy. Okay, let's see. So now, if we try the subdivision surface, uh, we actually don't need the subdivision surface now. If we have the remesh modifier enabled, so we're going to enable the dynamic paint mask. Now, if we play, the result is going to be a much better and much cleaner animation. But it is going to be a bit taxing. You can use a remesh add or modifier, but you can see it is a bit choppy when compared to if we keep the remesh modifier off. But the result will be a bit bad. So I would say that you use a remesh modifier. What you can do is just remesh it like. Eight. and from this I'm going to switch on the wireframe the issue with increasing the voxel size is that it uh, deforms the geometry so I would prefer to keep it at 0 0.00005 smooth shading it won't work okay so uh, even I haven't used the remesh add, uh, modifier before this I just know that it changes the geometry so I tried it and it, it is working fine so I guess this is the way to go remesh dynamic paint and mass modifier so this is what you get so I hope you learned something useful from this video have a great day bye bye